Hello everybody and welcome back to the next episode of the Deep Dive of Rangers manager Philippe Clement. Today I'm delighted to be joined by um, Nicholas Fieve from uh, the Clocker podcast. He's a producer for them and he's also a football commentator. Um, so I'm looking forward to this one to see the next stage in Philippe Clement's manager real career. Enjoy. Hi Nicholas, how are you doing? Great, great, great. Although Bruges didn't won uh, last weekend, uh, I'm doing great myself. But uh, uh, yes. yeah, I'm doing fine. What, what was the score at the weekend? Uh, we drew against uh, Union Union Saint Gilles. Uh, yeah, was one one yeah. in at home. We should have won won the game, but well, we missed a lot of chances. And efficiency efficiency is a little bit of a problem this season with Bruges, but uh, I hope we we cope with it and uh, get better in it. <laughs> <laughs> I know I know I know the problem about efficiency and attack. Rangers are, are having similar yeah. problems just now. And um, so just let's go let's go from the start. Um, what kind of circumstances were Club Bruges in, and how did Philippe Clement get the job? How did it all come about? How did that happen? Well, uh, actually, Philippe Camon was, was a player for us for a very long time in the early 2000s till the end. Yeah, I was no, one, not a star player, but a player who played a lot of games for us. Um, he's not a legend of the club, but how you call it, a hero or something. So uh, he's not one of the most famous players, but a really famous player. Uh, afterwards, he um, became an assistant coach of, uh, of Bruges under uh, Michel Prudom. It's a very known keeper, Belgium keeper, and um, actually uh, together with Prudhomme as an assistant, he won us the first title in 11 years and first cup in seven years. So it was a really uh, important milestone uh, in our recent successes of the last year. So uh, it was in uh, 2015 uh, uh, and 16 he won that. Um, he wanted, after Prudhomme left the club, he wanted to become the head coach of Bruges, but um, he didn't get the job yet. Uh, so he moved on to a smaller team in Belgium called uh, Waasland Beveren. He was there for only a half year, did really great with the team. And then he moved to Genk, which is one of the top clubs also in Belgium, which he also played for as a player uh, next to Bruges. Um, and then actually he beat Bruges by winning the, the championship with Genk. Um, and then Bruges said, okay, now you can become our first coach. So that's how Clément get the, got the job in Bruges. Uh, and first year, he he, uh, he won the, the league title. He was also, uh, also the year afterwards, he won the title. was the first coach, only the second coach in Belgian history, won three consecutive titles in Belgium. So one with Genk and two with Bruges. And yeah, and then especially in the first year, he brought like amazing football, very vertical. We played an amazing Champions League. We drew on the Real Madrid, uh, played amazing games um, in the competition, really dominated the league um, at that point. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of the history of Philippe Clement and, uh, and Bruges. How is he? How is he seen? Um, what's Club Bruges fans' opinion on Philippe Clement now? Now, nowadays, uh, he, he was a really liked uh, coach because I also, as a player, he was a hardworking player, something that is really liked among uh, the Bruges fans. We're not like the tiki-taka style of football play. It's not not, not in our DNA, but um, yeah, he was like a really hard worker and that's something we really like and uh, appreciate. He wasn't the man of the big words, but uh, you could see he, he, he managed the team and really put spirit into the team. So... Um, yeah, he was a really liked person. Also, the moment he left, a lot of fans weren't happy with it. Um, but uh, yeah, the fans were a little bit divided at the point. A lot of fans really liked him because yeah, he won two league titles in a row, which is not very common for Bruges when you see the whole history of the club. Yeah. Um, and uh, but on the other hand, the the play was declining. We didn't play that vertical anymore. Um, so yeah, it was a little bit divided, but nowadays, yeah, everyone hopes Flip Clement is great because yeah, he's also uh, uh, how do you say it? Yeah, representing our club a little bit in 
and uh, yeah, in the other in other countries. So uh, that's why we hope he does good, a good job. And uh, how would you describe Philippe Clement's tactical philosophy, sub philosophy during his time managing Club Rouge? Well, um, like I said, the, the the first the first year it was really we really brought really great football, really dominating football, really dynamic, straightforward, fast playing. Um, but, it, but it changed over time. Uh, you also saw he had some favorite players who he also always put on on the pitch, which weren't doing really great. But, but because he had a good connection with them, he always let them play yeah. instead of other players who should deserve the spot. Um, so he had his little preferences and that's I think also was one of the reasons the play declined. So um, we played less good football, was more slowly, more to the backs, more defensively. Um, organizing, organized it was all. It was always an organized uh, football team, so not not very very chaotic. But um, and especially in the last months, um, we were lacking some creativity and an original style of play and ways to to. Um, um <clears throat> to yeah to surprise the 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 opposition so um yeah, yeah okay we, 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 were chatting, we were chatting before and you said they played a, a 4-3-3 mm-hmm. um did he ever how flexible was he in changing formation not that flexible um we used to have more flexible coaches um like before we had ivan leko which was a really dynamic uh coach was also really loved also an ex-player of bruges he was in the period in between uh Prudom and clement the head coach of bruges um but tactical flexibility wasn't that great it was not the kind of manager who would do uh, certain substitutions which really changed the games that wasn't something we were seeing at bruges he had a really good starting formation, which was more mostly very dominant, and that way he wanted to um, to win the games. Um, so a big change of tactical plans. We haven't seen that from him a lot in in his Bruges times. See, in terms of um, his offensive play, how did he set up the the three up front? Was it a straight? Was it a single striker and a two winger? Did they swap positions? How? How did it play? Uh, I have to think who was playing uh, back in the days then. But uh, normally, well, we had uh, we had one big strike. It was uh, Wesley Moraes. He played also for uh, in the Premier League afterwards. Yeah. Um, so really strong uh, striker in the uh, in the front, and then two fast wingers normally who could sometimes change from from sides. Yeah, that was. Uh, and behind that, he had like his three midfielders who were always the same three. Uh, you had uh, Hans van Aken, who was still captain and playing in Bruges. Ruud Vormer, who was really good at that time, a Dutch player, but he retired in, nowadays. And then we had uh, one defensive midfielder. So that's what's, yeah, how the setup was a little bit. Well, the the wingers that played, were they, were they quite fast? Did they rely on them quite a bit? Yeah, we're, we're fast wingers. We always had a, a fast wingers um, last years. It's a bit uh, also... Part of the scouting team to have young fast wingers yeah because yeah you can sell them for a lot of money as well yeah. so uh yeah mostly did fast he, wingers see defensively did he did he prefer uh his defenders to like ha- did, did they set his team up in a high press or were they more conservative in their defensive approach uh from my perspective especially in the last uh last period they were more conservative we didn't put um, a lot of high pressure anymore on the on the opponent um that was something we were lacking um because high pressure is one of the things that that the, the fans really want to see in Bruges uh, mm-hmm. high pressing hard working football um and we we haven't been seeing that lately in the in the last months of of Clemence, uh um as Clemence as a, as a as a coach of Bruges so um no, but that we had that in the in the in the beginning when he was a coach, and he also did it with gang high pressure with some very very good players, also with fast wingers. The system was quite similar, which he brought to Bruges. Yeah. But also from a, starting from a good organization, that was always a thing. We didn't have like the the backs coming up really high or something. 
uh, over or do it overlap over the wingers. Um, yeah, okay. It was also always yeah really um, starting from a good base and then start attacking. Cool, cool. See, in terms of player development and man management, what was his relationship like with the more experienced or star players in the squad? Like you um, said, he had his he had his ones he preferred. Um, yeah. Yeah, Is that and, and have a weakness. Um, oh, both, both, because he could <laughs> <laughs> he could bring out the best in in some of the players, and I think for some positions confidence from a coach is, is, is really, really important. But one thing he did really good, uh, Philippe Clément, is developing young players. Uh, he did right. develop a lot of young players, like, for example, Charles de Kittler, who is now playing yeah. Um, yeah. at yeah. Atalanta, won the Europa League. He was one of the players Clément brought, firstly. He brought him, it was a home game against the Paris Saint-Germain in Champions League, and he said, you can start. So he he's really good in developing young players that's that's the thing he did really really good at Bruges um so uh, the kid lad is one of the examples but you had several other uh, young players who really developed under him and he also did that in Genk uh, for example Leandro Trossard who is now uh, playing Arsenal is also one of the young players he brought up in Genk uh, at that time so um that's one of his strengths as well he had his preferences um over some players who always played, uh, but also um, he had some issues with our captain, Ruth Former at the right. time, at the same game against Paris Saint-Germain, I think. Yes, it was, yeah, it was with Philippe Clément. Um, he could not play. Uh, we played for the first time. It was a home game, also Paris Saint-Germain, two years later after the debut of the Kit uh, It was the first game of Neymar, Mbappé and... Um, and Messi together, the first time they played together was a Champions League game in Bruges. And he puts uh, our captain, Ruud Former, who was, who was really a legend of the club, uh, he put him on the bench. Uh, Former was really, really, really upset, upset with it. Um, so, yeah, sometimes he, yeah, it's people, he was known as a people manager, but um, yeah, also we had some struggles with some, some of the players. So, uh, we in Scotland would see that as him making a big decision, having the guts. Um, yeah, yeah, it's make, having guts, and it turned out great because uh, we drew one-one against uh, that PSG. So uh, at the uh, opening day result. of Champions League, so he did a great, great job back then. See, in terms of develop, when Clement came in to Club Bruges, was there any players there that he made better, better players to sell for a bigger transfer fee? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I should look up the players, but we have uh, Kosunu who is now playing in Leverkusen, uh, now also playing Atalanta, played in Leverkusen last year. Charles de Kittelare, he developed. Um, Wesley Moraes, he developed even more. Uh, Samata uh, as well was one, wasn't he? What? Ma Samata. Was he Samata one? was a gang player, but he, he developed him well in gang. Trossard, uh, he did a great job with. Um, oh was there as well yeah there were many players and he, he wasn't afraid to bring young players that was also a thing he had a good link because before as an assistant coach he also um was working with um, the with the youth of the club with the youth players a lot was it really involved with it so he was a little bit of a link as an assistant between the youth players and the first team so he really knows the players as well knows how to bring them and it was one one of his strengths and it uh, gained a lot of money for Bruges. uh back in the day so uh yeah see in terms of um high pressure matches was obviously you guys have that playoff is it the last yep. yeah yeah the playoffs yeah it's a really weird system it's the actually we have the title. regular competition yeah. then we pick the first six divide the points in half and play two games against each other so it's really tense at the end of the season was he able to instill a, a winning mentality in the players to come through them games did was he able to guide them basically over the line to the championship did, mm -hmm. was there ever any questions over um it's difficult to say because uh clement played i think uh Two, uh, one play only one playoff campaign with Bruges because we had the the COVID year, which the playoffs yeah, were okay. uh, didn't come through. Um, and there we, I think we won the title over uh, Genk, but it was really really close as well. 
uh, well, I hope I'm not missing right now. Um, yeah, but it was really close. And also with Genk, he won the title against Bruges, but Bruges actually did play a really good playoffs. Um, yeah, in the big games, yeah, it's difficult to say. In, in regular competition, he did great. Like uh, We beat our fierce rival Anderlecht like, a lot of times when he was uh, our head coach. So you, uh, at home and away. Um, yeah, which was... I that's very Back reassuring. in the day, uh, Vincent's company was a trainer. On the left, was like, oh, we're now bad. the biggest team again. And we beat him like three or five times in a row. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the, no, he did he did great jobs. But, yeah, it all depended on, on, on a little bit on the confidence of the team and the, and the form of the moment. It's, it's hard to say it's really good at, at tense games or not. Um, it, it's, it's variating a lot. It's sort of reassuring to hear because he's, yet, he's, he's not beaten Celtic yet. Ah. And there's times where we've looked close and then we lose sit between six and eight players in the summer and we bring mm -hmm. in a younger profile player that we can develop and then we go to Parkhead last month and get beat 3-0 and it didn't it, it looked as if the gap is massive whereas you would have thought at the end of last season after the cup final the gap is maybe that big but mm -hmm. now we think it's this big. Um, yeah. So that's why I was asking about, like, can he, is he okay in a kind of big game mentality? How did he yeah, come yeah, especially in Especially in, in Champions League, he did it. Eh? Uh, for example, the games against, uh, we drew 2-2 in Madrid, against Real Madrid. Yeah. Also one of the first games of a Champions League campaign. So he, he is able to do it. Uh, we went 2-0 up front in Bernabeu, so it was a... One of the greatest moments as a fan for me pers personally. Uh, and the draw wasn't, we should have won the game, always got a cheap red card, stuff like that. But he, he can bring up the players to big moments. That's something he really can do. Um, yeah. But it all depends on the form of the team, of course. Um, there are a lot of things playing that you cannot always have in hand as a, as a coach. So uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting to hear. That's interesting mm -hmm. to hear. Um, how did you, right, so has Clement's tactics in Belgium, do you think that he'll be able to do successful in Scotland, knowing what you know about him? Yeah, I think um, a lot of people, um, I think, who are not from Belgium, underestimate our competition a little bit, I think, because Belgium is a really, really physical competition, yeah. which is... Totally different, for example, from the Netherlands, which is a very uh, attacking and uh, more. Um, uh, it's in Belgium. It's really, really physical. Like in Belgium, you are prepared to play like in Bundesliga or in uh, the Premier League, where you have to go one hundred percent in it. Um, so yeah, I think he played our competition like for so long. He knows it so well. So I think he he can bring that up as well. So. Uh, that's, that's cool. an answer to that's your cool. question. Yeah. <laughs> See, in terms of injuries, right? <laughs> when yeah. Philippe Clamont came in at Rangers, there was a lot of injuries, and he went into the medical department and he's made certain changes since he's came in. Was he able to improve any of the Club Bruges players' conditions while he was there? Um, we had quite some issues at the time as well with, with injuries. Yeah. Um, I can remember we had some issues at crucial points, at crucial moments actually, with a lot of um, yeah, a lot of crucial injuries at at bad moments, and also yeah, uh, that was some that was a little bit of an issue as well in Bruges. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, um, and well, did he bring improvements of it? Not really, because it improved afterwards after he left. So uh, <laughs> nowadays, nowadays we don't have that much injuries anymore or long-term injuries so uh but yeah. it used to be a big, a big problem at the club yes but yeah it also depends one on on the on the medical on the medical team and two on on the players yeah you can't yeah. always predict an uh an, an injury but yeah do you think that philippe Clement will be successful at rangers i hope we really, really hope so we really hope so i think um as a Belgian, uh, his mentality um, could work very well in a, in a Scotland at, at Rangers, who is also like uh, a worksman's club uh, for, the, for the working class, I think. 
especially. And that's, that's something Bruges has in its DNA as well. Um, so yeah, I think so too. And even I think he would fit in a in a premier in a lower tie Premier League team as well, um, if it's the right club for him. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I think he can he can he can make great successes in uh, in the uh, Rangers and really hope he does because yeah, he's a li- little bit of our ambassador uh, as a trainer in. Uh... Yeah, of course, of course. See, uh, see when he came into Club Bruges first as manager. Did, was there an expectation to go and win that, the league straight away? Yeah, of course, yeah. because he, he won it with Genk the year before. Right, okay. He won it with Genk against Bruges, so everyone was like, oh, we're picking uh, the coach of our of our rival. But Genk is not a big rival, but uh, nowadays uh, it's, I think, the second biggest club in Belgium uh, after Bruges. Uh, so, yeah, it was, it was a big thing in Belgium. Uh, he won the title with Genk, and one week later he signed with Bruges from who he won the title. So, uh, yeah, the expectations were really high and he did manage to to succeed those ex- expectations. Um, yeah. did, they win, did they win any cups while he was there? Not, not as a head coach, but as an uh, assistant coach he did. Uh, we won with the most memorable cup ever against Anderlecht in a final with a, a last-minute goal. So, uh, yeah, it was one of the greatest moments we had in the... In our in in my history as a fan. Right, okay. Is there anything you want to add, Nicholas? If not, thank you for joining me. Uh, I really hope he does well, and I hope you beat uh, you beat Celtic sometime. Eh? We we will play there uh, in a few weeks uh, for the Champions League at Celtic, Celtic. <laughs> at, at Celtic Park. So uh, there will be a lot of Bruges fans coming to Glasgow uh, by then, and uh, yeah, we have a, like also like. I think you will like it as, as a Rangers. A lot of British mentality and uh, as supporters with a lot of Union Jacks and stuff like that. Uh, so good. maybe we'll find some uh, some friendships uh, between Rangers fans and uh, Bruges fans. Uh. The, um, okay. Do you want to just tell the listeners where they can find you? What? Sorry. Do you want to tell the listeners where they can find you? Um, I'm I'm not there on my holidays, but a lot of my other podcast friends are are there. Will be there in uh, will be there. Well, in I just mean like on social media, like. Ah, your, your, your podcast you can follow us on the Clocker Podcast. It's it's in Dutch. <laughs> it's not that easy to write down. I think for someone who speaks English, uh, the Clocker Podcast. You can follow us, uh, and we have an episode every week. It's in Dutch, if you understand it. Um, yeah, and we do a podcast about Bruges every week. Next week we'll have the CEO of Bruges uh, in our podcast as a guest. So uh, yeah, it's interesting. Nice. <laughs> Rangers, Rangers need a CEO just now, so tell them to hop on a plane and come over and join us instead. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> right, Nicholas, right. thank you for joining me. Yeah, I was very glad, glad to be here. So uh, good luck with Rangers and uh, with Philippe Clément, of course, and all the other Belgian players. You have Cyril Dessers, and there, are there any other? Uh, several Dessers, yeah. We've got Dessers. We've got uh, Nick- Nicholas Raskin. Ah, Raskin, yes, yes. Yeah, he, he would have signed for Bruges. It was a long time. They discussed it a lot of times, but uh, Ra- yeah. uh, Rangers got away with him. So, uh, yeah. He's yet, but he, he, needs to, he needs to fulfill his potential. He yeah, to, he's still a young he, player. Um, yeah. uh, but he comes from uh, from Standard, Standard Liège, so from the French-speaking part of, uh, of Belgium. But he, he's a good player. He's a good player with a lot of... Um, Aggressive mentality, I think. When I remembered him playing in Belgium, uh, he wasn't really loved by the Bruges fans when he was playing at the uh, at the opposition. But uh, yeah, he he's, can um, play really good games. And uh, he's yeah. been he's been hot by injury quite a bit since he signed. Ah his, yes, there was also an issue at uh, at Standard back in the days. I remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, well, Nicholas, thank you for joining me again. Best of luck no for problem. the remainder of the season. <laughs> yeah, good luck to Club Bruges as well. Right, thank thanks, you, thank you. Cheers. Thank you.